The eBay seller described this chuck as new, but quote, has some rust issues. I'm not so sure about the new part, but I am pretty sure about the rust part. I'm also pretty sure we can fix it. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Late last year, I finally got a surface grinder in the shop, and you've seen a few parts that have come off of it since then. But as with all new machines, the machine is only the beginning. To actually put it to work, you also need a bunch of tooling. Chucks, blocks, sign plates, centers, the list goes on. And the cost of that tooling varies directly with the precision. If you buy new, you can easily spend more for a sign plate, a mag chuck, and a cylindrical grinding fixture than the cost of the grinder itself. So I've been trolling eBay looking for bargains, and I've picked up a few items that Tom Lipton didn't get to first, but some of them are going to need a little bit of love, and we're going to start on that today. This is a 6 by 6 inch fine pole permanent magnetic chuck. This one was made by Suburban Tool, and this is a part of their S1 series. And the S1 or the Sign Set series are a set of tools that are designed to just bolt together so that you don't need any fixturing. You can put a chuck on a sign plate or any of their other fixtures. They're all compatible. This is specifically the 6x6 fine pole chuck. These things retail for about $1,600, though I paid considerably less, though the condition is considerably worse. I think it's interesting to note that from the factory, they claim 2 tenths square and parallel. I think we can do better than that. You can see the fixturing holes here on the bottom. We'll take a look at that later. The handle seems to be in good shape until you turn it over, and one side of this is really badly pitted. I have no idea how long it takes for this to happen. Where I live, this basically never happens. The chuck does operate. It feels a little bit stiff to me. I would have expected it to be a lot easier to turn. I tried some of the tricks that I read online, like letting it sit on a shelf upside down for a while, and it helped a little, but it's still pretty stiff. Dale Derry was actually in my shop this week and he had a go at turning it and he told me it feels pretty good. It's smooth. He says it feels better than any of his chucks. So I guess we'll just go with that. Now, the seller said this was new, but I'm picking around here on it. And aside from the rust, there's also a lot of grit and gumminess in here. This looks like coolant residue to me. So I'm pretty skeptical of this being new. I mean, maybe this was a liquidation type deal where, you know, somebody came into a shop that was closed and was just selling off the tools, found it in the box and called it new. I talked to the seller about it briefly and he said, well, it's probably just tight because it's new and the stuff you see on it is cleaner because he, quote, cleaned it up a little. That concerns me, um, depending on exactly how he cleaned it up. While the top of the chuck definitely needs to be ground, the bottom actually looks pretty clean. This looks to me like it's probably the factory grind, so I'm going to just assume that this is clean and flat. That assumption is going to turn out to be bad later, but for now, I can continue to be optimistic. I did also pick up the matching 6-inch sign plate. This has the four holes around the outside for mounting it to the bottom of the magnetic chuck with some screws. And while this piece looks pretty clean, it does have some geometry issues and is probably going to need to be ground as well. But that is going to be a separate video. For today, we're going to focus on the chuck. I do want to clean this up a little bit before I take it over to the grinder. So I'll start by taking off the fences. Suburban Tool calls these the side and back rails, so they have the same part number. They're identical. And these are rusted and these are pitted up pretty bad. I would like to grind those in as well and probably grind and clean up the mating faces where they sit against the side of the chuck. But let's not get distracted now. That's a project for another day. There is, unsurprisingly, a little additional rust underneath where those rails were. I'm going to start with some fine Scotch-Brite and just try to take this off, see how much of it's on the surface. I don't feel great about taking Scotch-Brite to this because while it's not really taking off very much material, it's not the same as grinding it and it's not going to be perfectly true. I'm probably going to end up grinding this in later and squaring it up, but for today I'm just going to try to clean this up and just see how deep the rust goes and see how well this comes off. 
using Scotch-Brite with a little WD-40 turned out to be a pretty good recipe for getting that off. It doesn't look like it's really pitted in. I'll bring in the precision flat ground stones and clean this up and just make sure there are no burrs or dings or anything sticking up here. These particular precision flat ground stones came from Kinetic Precision. I bought them many years ago and I could not live without them in the shop. If I broke one or lost it, I would go out and buy another set tomorrow, maybe even today. So I'm just working my way around here, cleaning up all the sides and all of these are cleaning up pretty well. I didn't really find anything in the way of dings. I mean, you can feel with the stone that it was a little bit rough when I first started. This side's obviously got some pitting, but most of the rust came out of that with the Scotch-Brite, so I feel okay about it. The bottom, of course, looks beautiful. We'll run the stone over it, and again, I'm not feeling anything. We're gonna grind the top, but I do wanna have a go at cleaning this up and just kinda of see what we're dealing with, because I would like to measure this ultimately and figure out how deep these are before it goes over to the grinder and getting as much rust as I can out of the pits will help with those measurements. Yeah, it doesn't look great. This does have threaded holes on the bottom as a part of the sign set system, so I've got a quarter 20 bottoming tap here, and I'm just gonna run this by hand to the bottom of all the holes, both on the bottom and also the side holes for the side rails, and blow those out just to make sure there's no junk left in the bottom. With the chuck cleaned up and stoned, I feel safe putting it on the surface plate. I've got a Mar Millimess indicator here. This is 50 millionths of an inch per division, two thousandths plus or minus full scale. Just got it in a height gauge here, and we will measure the top of this chuck and see how parallel it is to the bottom. Now, I don't have a fine adjust on the height gauge, but there is a fine adjust on the dial indicator here. And again, a 50 millionths of an inch per division, this thing is really fiddly. Get that zeroed up on this corner. Tap it a little bit to make sure everything's settled. We'll call that zero. And that means this corner's, oh, minus about a tenth. So one ten thousandth of an inch. Mark the first corner zero, mark this minus one for one ten thousandth of an inch. Check this corner. That looks like maybe two and a half tenths. I marked it minus two because I couldn't see the gauge as well as I can looking at the video now. That looks like that's maybe 50 millionths, maybe 30 millionths low, minus 0.5. Now this doesn't appear to be rocking at all, maybe a tiny bit, right? I mean, 20, 30 millionths of an inch. That's not crazy, that could just be flexibility, so I'm not too worried about that. Now I should be, because that bottom's not as flat as I think it is at this point, but I don't know that yet, so I'm still happy. This seems relatively stable, I mean at least on the scale that we're measuring here. So now let's fish around and see if we can figure out how deep these pits are. Now I'm seeing some places where this is hitting at least minus two thousandths, just using the pin here to tap it around and try to find a low spot. Now I'm fully aware that there's a ball tip on the end of this indicator, so it's not going into the sharp pockets, but it is dropping in enough that we've hit full scale on this gauge, and we're gonna need to find something else to measure this with. Yeah, this is routinely hitting the minus two thou limit. So I'll bring in my Mitotoyu tenths indicator. I've got to turn this around because it has a 3 8 inch stem instead of the eight millimeter stem on the Mar. Mount this up, zero it out. And this doesn't have a fine adjust, so I got lucky and hit this on zero. This is one ten thousandth of an inch per division. And there's minus one in that corner, which is what we measured. There's minus two, which is about what we measured with the Mar. So I'm satisfied that this thing is mounted and reading correctly. And this has a longer range, so we can read the depths of some of these pits. Now again, there's a ball tip on this as well, so we're not getting the full story. But this, this is dropping in a full five thousandths of an inch in the deepest pits that I can see. I fished around here for a while, and minus five is just about the deepest I could find. So we know we're gonna have to take off 
at least five thousandths, but it's probably not too much more than that. I really wanted to figure this out before taking it to the grinder to decide if I wanted to take a pass across this with a fly cutter in the mill first, but five thousandths of an inch seems like something that we can do on the grinder just fine. I'll turn the chuck on for grinding just to make sure it's seeing the same forces that it will when it's in use in case it distorts a little bit. The wheel I'm using is a 46H open structure wheel. This is aluminum oxide and this should be good for this application. Honestly, I use this wheel for just about everything. I'm touching off here on the high point, the corner that's marked zero. And I'm just coming down until I see a few sparks. And now I'll just work my way across. We'll turn on the vacuum, we'll turn on the coolant, and we'll just work our way across the chuck. I'm taking a full wheel width at a time, or maybe 400 thou, it's a half inch wheel. And my goal here is just to make sure that there aren't any high spots or any surprises elsewhere on this so that when I really start grinding and start hogging material, I don't end up getting into a really deep spot that I didn't expect. And this looks fine. So I'll come back, lower it maybe a thousandth of an inch and go across here. And again, I'm just taking 400 thou, almost the entire wheel width at a time. This is a two horsepower motor in this grinder, so it should be able to hog quite a bit of material without bogging down, and it's handling this just fine. And then I will just take a couple thou more and just work my way back across. Now this is full width of the wheel, two thousandths of an inch depth of cut. And I can definitely feel the difference going left versus right, whether I'm going with the wheel or against the wheel. I actually kind of have to hold it back and not let it self-feed. But this thing is just handling this like a champ. I was a little bit concerned about taking a full wheel width at this kind of depth, but this grinder is just handling it beautifully. My goal here is not to get a pretty finish, which is good because I'm not. I'm just trying to take the material down until those pits disappear. And you can see I'm getting pretty close. There's still a little bit there. And as I get closer, I'll back off a little more. But I'm taking between a thou and two thou per pass. And you can see we're getting real close here. And that looks to me like I've taken most of it out, so let me switch to lighter passes here and let's just come across and dust off just taking a couple tenths and just see how it cleans up. I'm definitely going to want to dress the wheel before the final pass, but I'm just trying to see how close we can get here. Mostly I'm just undoing the damage of the rough surface that was done by taking those really deep cuts. Let the wheel stop so nobody yells at me about using a rag near a spinning wheel. And we'll dress the wheel for the final cleanup passes. With those deep passes, it, it was clogging up, so we'll start with a nice fresh clean surface and just work our way across. Now I probably could do a full wheel width here, but I'm just taking about 30 thou per pass. That's just about how far I can conveniently turn the crossfeed dial or the Z dial on the on the grinder between passes. It's a nice repetitive motion with my right wrist and it's easy to do and it results in a pretty nice finish. I can totally live with that. Now since the bottom of this is flat and large and on a magnetic chuck and it's wet, this was a challenge to get off. I know I'm not supposed to slide it, but it was the only way I could get a good enough grip to lift it. Back over on the surface plate, we'll zero out the Mar Millimus again, and let's just see how we did. I'm gonna call that zero, and it repeats pretty well. We're not rocking. You can see we got most of those pits out. There's a little bit of a you know, witness mark here, but I can live with that. And let's see how we did. And the answer is not great. That's a little more than a tenth. I was hoping it would be flatter than that. 
And yeah, we're at two tenths there. That's like the factory spec. Again, I was really hoping to be better than that. There's a little bit of motion here. Um, it's just starting to dawn on me that that might actually be an issue. Back to this corner, we're pretty much back to zero and back where we started, we're now showing just ever so slightly above zero. Yeah, this looks okay. I'm not super happy with it. Honestly, I was expecting better. Call this plus 0.3. Yeah, that's about right. This corner minus one. Maybe one and a half. Again, I can't really see very well. You're, you're right in my way. And that looks like minus two and a half. Yeah, I really expected this to be better than this. So this is about the point at which I realized, you know, I probably shouldn't just trust that the bottom is flat. I probably should check it. So I'll flip this over. That runs nice and clean on the plate. And let's see what the bottom looks like. And the answer is, yikes. Look at that. What is that, five, six tenths? We're zero in that corner, and as we come across the side here, we're dropping maybe seven tenths. And in the center, we're almost a thou low. The bottom of this thing is not even remotely flat. So before we make any further attempts to try to get the top flat, we better grind the bottom of this. Yikes. Back over at the grinder, it is same song, second verse. I'll just touch off on the corner here and make a pass across. Again, I know I need to take quite a bit here, but I'm going to be really conservative on the first pass just so that I don't have any ugly surprises. And you can already see that it's hitting on the edges and not at all in the middle. And as we reach the far edge here, we're hitting again. Okay, so now having established my safety zero, I'll take a few tenths and just work my way across. I'm not in a huge hurry here. The mist coolant here does a great job of keeping the part cool. It's not really carrying away the swarf at all, but it definitely keeps the part cold. And in the middle, yeah, you can see I'm still just hitting on the outside edges. So I'll just keep working my way back and forth across this, taking a few tenths at a time until I'm seeing consistent sparking all the way across. And here we're taking two or three tenths, and that looks pretty clean. We are actually hitting all the way across. I'm getting a consistent grind all the way across. So I'll take another tenth or two and just work my way back and forth and let this thing spark out. You can see we're getting a nice, even, really fine spark pattern. So I think we've got this now. This might be a good time to confess that I've never actually ground in the chuck on this grinder. It came with a grind on it from the factory. It sure looked to me like it had been ground in situ, and I did run a tense indicator across it and couldn't really see any deviation, so I decided just to leave well enough alone until I had a little bit more experience with the machine. But as long as we're trying to hold tenths here, or millionths of an inch, it seems prudent to go ahead and at least just dust this off. So I came down and just took a tenth at a time, and the spark pattern looked pretty consistent all the way across, but I decided to go ahead and mark this thing up with a pencil just to make sure I really was getting it clean. And it's a good thing I did that, because it did look like maybe it was, you know, maybe I had a tenth or two or a few millionths where I was, there was, that there was some, um, it wasn't entirely flat. It was really, really close, but it wasn't entirely flat. So I ended up taking a couple of passes across this one ten thousandth of an inch at a time, and it did ultimately clean up. And I gotta say, a freshly ground chuck with a good finish on it is just a beautiful thing. There are very few things in the machine shop as satisfying as that. Look at that. Look at that and marvel. I saw you marvel. You marveled. Now I'll put the freshly ground bottom of the chuck on the freshly ground top of the other chuck. Get this magnetized down. Make sure both chucks are on and we should be ready to finally clean up the top of this thing and hopefully 
get a little closer than we did last time. We'll start once again by playing like we're in kindergarten and scribbling all over the chuck just as a reference. And then I'll come across taking a few tenths here with 100 thou passes. That's one full turn of the Z crank on the grinder just to get the bulk of the material off of this. And then we'll switch to passes of one or two ten thousandths of an inch just to clean it up. And we'll just keep going until it looks beautiful. Now, technically, when I ground the bottom of the chuck, that was before I had ground in the chuck on the grinder. So that grind probably wasn't perfect, but I'm guessing it's at least planar. So this should be valid and this should be close enough. We could go chasing millions if we want, but it's probably not really worth it. And let's see how we did. Once again, play the game of trying to get this thing zeroed up. That looks pretty good. We'll call that corner zero. It's a little bit of fluctuation when I change directions dragging the tip. But there we are. That's about 50 millionths low. I'm going to call that. You might argue more. Again, there's a little bit of variation when I go back and forth with the tip. Coming across to this opposite corner, we're seeing essentially the same 50 millionths low. To the fourth corner, and we're sitting at very close to zero, maybe 10, 20 millionths high. This is so much better than what we were seeing before. And in fact, it's quite a bit better than it is from the factory. We're definitely within a tenth here, and I am really happy with that. Let's try this again with this turned on. Uh, people are probably going to scream at me in the comments about using a, a dial indicator on a magnetic chuck that's turned on. And they might be right. Go ahead and throw your opinions down there and tell me why I should or shouldn't do this. So there we are, maybe 60, 70 millionths low. It's fluctuating a little bit as I drag, maybe 50 millionths low there. This corner, maybe 40 millionths high. Again, I'm just interpolating. I know you shouldn't do that. Well, or it's close to zero, depending on which way you're dragging. Again, there's not a lot in this. And back to zero. This looks great. Compared to what this thing was like when I when I got it, this is just absolutely gorgeous. We should probably check the bottom and see how we did there. Here we are at zero, or very close to it. Oh yeah, this is way better. And we are maybe 50 millionths high, and we can kind of sweep across here, and we're fluctuating here between about 50 millionths high and 50 millionths low. Again, within a tenth overall not plus or minus a tenth within, you know, plus or minus 50 millionths. So I am definitely happier with this. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But what about in the middle? Well, that looks pretty much flat, at least planar. You know, the whole thing is tilted by about 50 millionths from one side to the other. But uh, I am really happy with that. That is so much better than it was when we started. And it's flat enough that actually lifting it off the surface plate is a little bit challenging. Well, I think this chuck is ready to use. Let me turn it off so I don't erase any of my credit cards carrying it around the shop. I'm gonna call this a win. For my first go at grinding something that actually matters to me, I think that went pretty well. It's clear I still have a lot to learn and I'm happy to get that from anyone who will teach, including you. If you saw something I did wrong or have a suggestion for getting better results, be a useful human and put that down in the comments. I'd like to hear it. And if you'd like to help support the channel, the best way to do that is through Patreon. If you're already a patron, thank you. You make it possible for me to do this. Thank you for watching.